Hey, everybody, and welcome to AQ's Blog and Grill. We're excited today to have uh, Peter Whitby with us. Peter is uh, co-founder and uh, CEO of a new firm called O2 Canada. And O2 Canada has a, has a really interesting uh, blend of um, technology and style in the, um, the face mask business, in the um, personal air pollution uh, um, mask is the best way probably to describe it, although Peter probably has a better way. So Peter, welcome. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for having me. It's uh, so I was saying earlier. Anytime I get to hang out with you, it's going to be a great day. So <laughs> excited to be here. Well, thank you very much. So, Peter, give us a little bit of background on um, how O2 got stand, uh, started. I think it was around five years ago. But how did you guys come to be? Yeah. So, great question. Um, it started off with traveling to China. I had a friend of mine that was doing business there, and I said, "You're going to China? I, I have to come. Like, I just don't understand." what 1.4 billion people looks like. Like, I just can't wrap my head around that. And went to China, experienced an incredible culture, amazing people, but I also discovered air pollution. So in Beijing, I didn't see the sun for three days. I couldn't breathe. I was literally had a tickle in my throat and was like spitting in Tiananmen Square. And I just, I felt terrible. And I was like, what is going on? And, you know, we learned that 90% 90% of people breathe bad air like this every single day. So from there, my friend Rich said, you know, I'm surprised they don't have a nice scarf or a jacket. You know, that stigma of wearing a, a white medical mask, like I'm surprised there's not something nice. And that stuck with me. And I came back to Canada and I started engineering a jacket. So I hired a designer, I hired a seamstress on Kijiji and I sewed up a jacket that went up over my nose and it looked terrible, but uh, that's how it that's how it all began. And and I, I pitched my friend, and he said, you know, this thing looks terrible, but you're nuts to build this, and I'd love to help you. And and so he's much more technical than me. And that's the the genesis of O2. Wow, great. So tell us a little bit about this Rich character. Yeah, so Rich, he was my boss. We met on a construction site, um, and he's very innovative, very creative, and very good with his hands. He can literally build anything. So he's not technically an engineer, but he oversees a team of like 12 engineers now. So uh, they're always astounded that he doesn't, that, you know, that he doesn't have a master's in mechanical engineering, (laughs) but uh, he's the other half of O2 and and critical to the success of this business. Yeah. So Rich has the title of uh, chief innovation officer. And then you kind of uh, you kind of hooked up with um, a guy at the um, Faculty of Engineering at the University of Waterloo. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, very fortunate to be from Waterloo and to have studied there and to have the best engineering department in Canada. And actually, I just doing research, I discovered that there's an air pollution research lab, an innovation lab at the University of Waterloo, and I cold called Professor Tan and found out that he's one of the world's leading experts on air pollution. He literally wrote the textbook that's used across North America. Um, and he's now, now the vice dean in, in engineering. So got to meet him and he said, look, you guys are so ambitious. It's part of my mandate to help people in the community and, and let me help you. And so we took our idea, we took some 3D prints in there and we started studying dust mass and every air pollution mask out there to you know, ultimately create the best mask of the world. And it's been tested and it is selling in China now? It is. So it, it went, underwent a lot of testing. Um, before we had the confidence to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars building it, we needed to know that it worked. So um, extensive testing in the lab and, you know, another two years to figure out how to build this thing. As uh, they say, hardware is hard. <laughs> and uh, we're selling worldwide. Like we've sold in five continents, over 30 countries. You know, in the past week, we've sold to 21 countries, 47 states in America. Um, we've, we, you know, that scale. Like it, it's, it's truly a product, not just, you know, for Canada. It's, it's oh. global. Yeah. So what sets you apart as the, as the O2 mask? Um, what is it that, that kind of makes you... Uh, unique in this marketplace? It's a great question. So I think it starts with our mission. So ultimately, we want to help people breathe clean air. 
So that's the most important thing. We need to create a product that works really, really well. And during our testing, we learned that um, the biggest challenge with these masks that you see everyone wearing right now is that they leak. So if you don't have a good seal, it doesn't matter how good that filter membrane is, it's not gonna work. So our product focused all on creating a perfect seal around your nose and your mouth to force all the air through the filter. So function first mm -hmm. and then aesthetics and how it looks and how it feels and what that brand is about. Um, you know, we wanted to go high premium, you know, we, we, you know, it's kind of corny, but we wanted it to feel like you're opening an iPhone, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's help people, um, and then make it look good. Those are right. kind of our foundational pieces. So when you say look good, Peter, is it, um, are you, are you offering different, uh, different colors, different designs? What, what is it about looking good? Yeah, there's, there's a number of aspects to that. Um, so it is modular. So it always comes standard. See, it always comes standard in a white shell. It's like a standard mm -hmm. phone. But then we offer the ability to accessorize the mask. So um, different colors. And as we grow, we'll have things like sports teams. But there's other features within the engineering that are, we find critical. Right. Um, we have a high-end magnet on the back. And so we have a lot of customers that have long hair or that are females. So we don't want to mess up their hair. So little things like that. So it, it goes on like a necklace. Um, these are critical pieces to it looking good, feeling good, and ultimately wanting to wear a mask. How about uh, the filters? Is there anything that uh, you can share with us on um, your plans and, and your current uh, production of the filters? Yeah, so our filters, um, there's a couple unique features to them. They are manufactured in the US. Uh, we engineered them, just pull this out here. We engineered them to be flat. And what happens is when they go into the mask, they go into three dimensions. And what this allows us to do is have uh, less layers in the filters to make mm -hmm. them easier to breathe. Um, additionally, they're electrostatically charged. So they have, um, uh, basically they attract very small particles whilst being easy to breathe. So a lot of engineering in that piece, it seems so simple but just a lot of work went into creating that. On the box, um, and, and I have a couple of these actually, mm. I, I, I bought a couple for my family uh, for travel on airplanes. Um, you know, you, you travel seven or eight hours mm. to Europe and you get there and you feel terrible. Uh, I'd rather have better air uh, than not. So on the box, it says premium air pollution protection protects against up to 99% of PM 2.5 particles. What, what does that mean, Peter? Yeah, so um, PM 2.5 is the main indicator for air pollution. And what it's referring to is particles that are 2.5 microns in size. So these are invisible particles. It's about one eighth the size of a human hair. Mm. And in major cities and across Asia and in a lot of parts of the world, they have really high PM 2.5 levels. Um, in Canada, it's, it's not an issue for us. We don't have this challenge. But the problem with these particles is that they get into the human body. They enter through, uh, through your respiratory system into your lungs. And at this small level, they can actually create a chemical reaction in your bloodstream. So, you know, you, you hear the news on, you know, all these ailments coming from air pollution, everything from asthma, coughing, you know, ultimately things like Parkinson's, they're attributing all of these ailments to PM 2.5. And so with our mask, we want to protect you from getting those things into your lungs. And so the filter part filters down to uh, less than 0.1 microns and does a great job of attracting those. Right. And is, and is that the key factor uh, in Hong Kong and other places in China? Correct. Correct. So, you know, according to the World Health Organization, 90% of people breathe bad air, especially bad during the winter time. North China, they turn on the coal plants. India has the worst air in the world. They're doubling coal output. Um, and so big cities, you've got all these vehicles on the road, and this is contributing to air pollution and PM 2.5. So um, Western cities and countries like London, Paris, New York, um, Mexico City, these are mm. places with very high levels of air pollution. Right. So when we see pictures of people in, uh, in India and, uh, um, and China, uh, for the most part, and even now into Mexico City, 
we're seeing these, uh, they look like surgical masks or paper masks. Um, are those doing any good at all for those people walking around in that environment? Yeah, so we've, we've studied these masks extensively. The filter membrane on most of these masks are amazing. 3M has been making masks and filters for 70 years, and the filter membrane themselves are incredible. So if they have a good seal around your nose and your mouth, they certainly do help you. But once again, going back to that testing, it, it's all about having a good seal. Um, we, you know, Professor Tan talks about how air pollution is like water, and it'll take the path of least resistance, especially on the nanoscale. So these, you know, this leakage around your nose, you know, I've got a big nose, that gap in a dust mask, um, you know, that's, that's the problem. So do the masks help? For sure. Um, but they're not, they, they need to be fitted properly. Okay. So the thing about the, the O2 mask is about the fit and about the technology in the filter, et cetera. Do you actually, from an ergonom ergonomic point of view, are, are there different shapes of faces that you have to anticipate as you design these things? Yes, very good question, Alan. So uh, we started with an Asian profile. Um, we call it a low bridge fit. So we're targeting, you know, North China and Taiwan, Korea, Japan. And so we, we engineered the silicone piece to fit uh, more of an Asian profile. Now, um, we have another, as we've grown, we, we have a new size and we call it the high bridge fit. And so this is for Westerners, people like me with a large nose, um, you know, everyone's different. And, and what we're trying to do is really uh, focus on filling in that gap around your nose. And as we grow, we'll have new technology on that, that fit. Um, but fit is the most important piece. Really gotcha. is. So in terms of growth, um, I first bumped into you and Rich when you were at the Accelerator Center, I think that was it, or it might have been at Communitech. How has a, uh, an accelerator or an incubator helped uh, O2 Canada? So we wouldn't be here without the Accelerator Center, to be fully honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We worked on this project at nights. Uh, we applied for the Accelerator Center Jumpstart. We received the 30 grand, and all of a sudden we had an office. And we moved into that office, and we started to take this a little more seriously. From there, we met you, other amazing mentors like Steve Fike. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just, you know, at the AC, we basically had our mechanical engineering mentors. We also had our manufacturing mentors. So building something is, is incredibly difficult. And we were introduced to our, our vendors through the Accelerator Center. So um, I'm very confident. I'm very grateful for the AC. Uh, and we wouldn't be here without it. And that's right. the full truth. And the AC is the Accelerator Center, which is associated with the University of Waterloo, uh, as well as some other uh, funding from the Ontario government, from the Fed government. Um, and it, it is kind of a, it, it's this co collaborative environment where you've got great young entrepreneurs and older entrepreneurs, mature entrepreneurs, uh, mixing it up and sharing ideas. And uh, did you find that to be energizing as well as a place to hang your hat? Totally. So you've got other young entrepreneurs that are going through the exact same challenges as you. And so you don't feel so alone on, on the entrepreneurship right. side. Right. And then on the mentor side, you know, we're looking up to individuals like you that have gone through this. I think what I loved about the AC was so many Blackberry vets, right? You know, we yes. have this, this hardware company, we're on hardware that, that started in a small lab, and grew to be a global company. Well, all of a sudden you have all those talented people that have done this before. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's what makes it special and what makes yeah. Waterloo special. Yeah. Well, a guy like Steve Fike, uh, what a, he's a product designer, an industrial designer, used to be at uh, Blackberry Rim and uh, come on, that uh, he's done a great job for you guys. Well, we called it the O2 curve, Alan. I, <laughs> I'm sure you remember the Blackberry curve. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was my favorite first smartphone and yep. you know we started working with paul Kaltflesch from the blackberry oh, yes. days yep and he told us how he came up with the name the blackberry curve it was kind of like <laughs> a sexy audi right and, and he said yeah, yeah. Oh, your, yeah, your mask kind of has a curve to it and and kind of tipping our hat a little bit i think um 
you know, guys like Steve and, and Paul have done so much for Waterloo. How has the, the provincial and federal governments helped you um, as a president of O2 kind of get some footing outside of Canada? Yeah, so um, I think it's fair to say we wouldn't be here without government grants and support. Uh, mm-hmm. that's, that's absolutely true. We wouldn't exist. Um, on the federal level, they have several grants that help focus on sales and expanding. Um, so we've, we've been the beneficiary. We've traveled to Korea and Japan on the back of the federal government. From there, we've done you know a million dollars in revenue in deals from two distributors in Japan and Korea. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, that's just a perfect example. On the Ontario side, they really helped us do the first lab testing, helped us, you know, fund these studies. And, um, you know, it, it, it wasn't easy. This grant money is not free. There's a lot of work, but um, yeah, we wouldn't exist without it. Yeah. And I know when uh, there was an opportunity or two or maybe three where you were introduced at embassy functions, um, either in uh, Hong Kong or wherever that could have been real building blocks for you. Totally. So we launched this product in Hong Kong at the trade commissioner's office in central Hong Kong. So overlooking all the big banks, um, you know, it was free. It was, uh, (laughs) and and the trade commissioner service and the Canadian government is now our customer. So that entire office is wearing our mask in Hong Kong right now. Excellent. So, Let's talk about growth. Uh, right now, you're located uh, pretty much in uh, downtown Kitchener. And um, again, you've, you've grown from two people <laughs> to how many are how many odds on the team now? Our team is about 12 people. Uh, it was six of us six weeks ago. And then we had our weekly meeting today and looked around the table and there was 12. Um, we also currently have seven temporary workers upstairs building masks as we speak. Mm-hmm. So um, <laughs> they're not fully with us, but we're just trying to keep up with the demand of this, uh, the COVID virus and, and what it's done to our business. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the virus just for a second. Um, you actually know the date in January, I think, when um, the, I'm going to say this very carefully, the shift hit the fan. Um, was back in what the third week of January and then how what's transpired since then correct so I always say you know January 21st might be that date that that really changed everything for O2 and and the reason for that is we were doing the soft launch of our new product it's a totally different mask called the tactical respirator we were doing a launch in Las Vegas Mm -hmm. and that night so on January 20th in China the Chinese government announced human to human transmission of the coronavirus. And so that hit the papers on the 21st in, in the West. And so that day we saw just a tremendous spike in sales and it hasn't stopped. So I think that date changed everything um, as far as this virus that, that we're dealing with right now. So maybe before that, uh, a, a majority of your sales might have been overseas. Uh, you've seen a boost in North America? Correct. Yeah. So in the past two weeks, we've really seen a shift um, in sales into the U.S. market. Um, You know, this product was designed for North China. Mm -hmm. You know, the air in America is is beautiful, but uh, we've had sales in 47 states in the last week on our website. So uh, has that put any pressure on your personal time, Peter? I don't have personal time, Alan. I, uh, I hope this shirt's clean. I haven't shaved in a little while. Um, <laughs> no, we're we're going full tilt. I mean, we're going seven days a week. Um, I slept in the office a few nights last week. Um, we're doing everything we can. I mean, there's basically a day shift and a night shift. So 8, 9 p.m., China, Hong Kong, Korea, Japan, wake up, talking to customers there. We go to the middle of the night. Uh, in the morning, you know, Canada, the U.S. So it's, it's uh, you know, the mm-hmm. team should, is, is growing and needs to grow to keep up with this. Yeah. yeah. And you guys take this very seriously. You're, you keep that mission in front of you, which is, you know, around helping people breathe healthy air. This isn't about just the money or the margin. Uh, you could have jacked the price up uh, of this unit uh, several weeks ago, uh, but you didn't. 
No, no. I mean, that's that's insane. We price gouging is 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 criminal, in fact, and it's it's a terrible practice. So never crossed our mind. Price hasn't changed. Um, we're, we're even paying more to get our mask moving quicker and, and, you know, more with our filter supplier and things. So never crossed our mind. We want to help people breathe clean air. We have new products to help other individuals. Um, we give away masks when we can. We just okay. sent masks to Iran. Iran has a terrible outbreak right now. You know, these oh. are things we're, we're losing money on. Um, so we have to keep that mission critical. Mm -hmm. um, these devastated areas, we try to prioritize masks getting to them first. Um, you know, it's more important to have masks in Hong Kong and South Korea right now than in, uh, in the U.S., for example, right? It's, it's where the outbreak is. So, yeah, it's, um, it's critical to, to what we do in building that yeah. culture here. Yeah, good show. Um, tell us a little bit about the programs that you've done uh, reacting to wildfire situations, whether that be in Canada or the U.S. Yeah, so when, you know, as the earth gets warmer and warmer, we're seeing these, these terrible forest fire events, Australia recently, California, B.C., um, and it really started with Rich. I have to give him a lot of credit for this. Um, as we were preparing to launch, there was severe forest fires in British Columbia, and our mask actually does a really good job of, of soaking up the ash and, and the smoke. Um, and so Rich and Aaron flew out to BC and they actually handed out our masks. We didn't have the pretty box. It was just in a Ziploc bag. And they disseminated our first 500 masks to Salvation Army workers, volunteers, um, these forest, fighter, forest firefighters, um, because believe it or not, they, they hate the big bulky masks. So that's been the first mask we ever had, we gave away, and um, we will continue to help in, in those situations for sure. Mm -hmm. Did you do the same thing in um, Los Angeles? Yeah, we did. So uh, in LA, uh, Sonoma Valley, um, mm. same challenges, you know, devastating, right? There, more people lost their homes in California. And, you know, it's just, it just amazing that it continues to get worse and worse. And what happens is that smoke from the forest fires just sits over the city for six weeks. And so people with asthma, COPD, they're really affected. They can't even go outside. Um, so we had some really nice messages from people that were able to leave their home and, and go outside and garden and kind of live their life because they were able to get a curb. So, yeah, that's why, why we do this. There you go. So you must have received um, several <laughs> positive uh responses in the last couple of weeks uh, due to the virus of people who are using the mask, uh, not just for the virus, but for that cleaner air thing. Are you, are you getting good feedback from distributors and customers? Totally. I mean, we, we, we were just having trouble keeping up, um, but on social media, you know, these people are, are in a very scary situation. So they're, they're sending messages like, thank you for, you know, saving my life. Uh, thank you for giving me the ability to go outside um, can I get more filters? It's, it's your product feels so good. I didn't know that a mask could feel like this. It's just, it's incredible to, to work so hard and then to, to start seeing that feedback on a daily basis. Yeah, Excellent. It's really, really cool. Now also, I think it was uh, the middle of last week, a, um, a stylist, um, to the stars, um, sort of got, got on the bandwagon. Uh, hairstylist as well as uh, clothing stylist. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we, we received a phone call last week from, from LA, from Hollywood, uh, a guy named David Babai, and he's a hairstylist to the stars. So his clients include Kate Hudson, Angelina Jolie. And I was on a phone call and, and Sarah from our team came in and she was just bubbling. I've never seen her smile so much. She was just like, I'm talking to, you know, <laughs> Kate Hudson's publicist or stylist and and so we had a good chat with him he posted the curve and our brand on his on his instagram page we saw a huge spike in sales women across america it was pretty much all female buyers mm -hmm. and we've got a package i mean this is just a few days ago so we've shipped a whole package to hollywood and you know i hope to report that kate hudson is wearing a mask next week alan i'll <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll text you. I'll let you know. <laughs> I can hardly wait. This is probably a good, this is probably a good time for full disclosure. In that I'm an investor in O2 Canada and uh, 
that was about a year ago. When did, when did, uh, I think it might've been, yeah, maybe 18 months ago. You were, yeah. you're certainly in early and you know, we, these are the things that kept us alive. Like we, yeah. you know, we, right. We paycheck to paycheck. Um, paycheck who the hell gave you yeah, a exa- paycheck? Yeah, no, exactly. I, <laughs> have you seen my bank account? It's, uh, it's, it's amazing that I'm still yeah. alive. Um, but no, yes, you are an investor. We're, we're very lucky with an incredible group of angels like yourself. Um, so many good names, guys in hardware, you know, yeah. guys and girls that we look up to friends and family, just like you guys are crazy. I, I don't know if I'll ever see this money again. I don't know, but I just kind of believe in you like that true angel yep. mentality. Mm-hmm. And we're now getting to the point where, you know, VCs and, and larger groups, uh, where I think we're out of that phase, but we, sure. you know, we, we're very grateful for sure. So what else would you say, or what could you say, Peter, to um, other entrepreneurs that, you know, after five years uh, are starting to question maybe, is, is this worth it? Uh, what, what can you share with them? Yeah, so um, I'm a big believer in, that personal legend that, uh, you know, you gotta, you've got one life to live and you've got to, you've got to chase it and you've got to do something special. I studied history. So I studied the most successful people on earth and what, what they've done. So, you know, I used to have a great job. I used to have a really high salary, a nice home, but it was local. And it, it was, it was, it was all in KW in Kitchener Waterloo. And, and I wanted to do something global and make an impact. So, um, as long as you love what you're doing every day, you're doing the right thing. It's, it, you know, it's going to, going to take a little bit longer than you think. That's like Uh the pros advice. Right. So just, just, um, you know, there's a quote from Walt Disney that I, that I like, it's sometimes the only difference between winning and losing is not quitting. So just, just keep going, you'll you'll get there. And, and, you know, we're not fully there yet, but, uh, we're, we're in the journey right now. So there you go. Um, any personal heroes that, uh, you might've had that you would, in in a time of despair, you go and look at their history or what they might've said? Totally. Yeah. There's a few, um, uh, one individual that stands out for me is Paul Thompson, another entrepreneur at the accelerator center, Mm -hmm. um, went to Waterloo and, and then was the CEO and CFO of, uh, Sonova group in Switzerland, one of the biggest biggest hearing aid company in the world. And he's right. just, he's just so focused, so helpful. Um, just can lean on him, call him at any time. Yeah. Um, and then also my team, the team around mm-hmm. me, Rich, Aaron, Sam, Angela, uh, the, everyone mm-hmm. works so hard. Like they're, you, you saw Aaron earlier. Uh, he's, you know, he's, <laughs> he's 24 seven. He's, he's all in. So if they're working that hard, then, you know, we got to work harder. It's, oh. it's amazing. That's a, that's a great thing. And it, what I've found about O2 and you and Rich uh, and your team is that it's not about ego. It's about we go. Um, you guys are going to make it as a team or not, um, but it won't be from lack of trying. And I think that's key in any entrepreneurial adventure, which is where you guys are. Totally. Our team is special. Um, you know, I talked about that personal legend and I look at the people on our team and I, I look at the slots they're in and I, I feel like everyone's doing exactly what they're meant to do. You know, Angela, she's an accountant, but she's growing into the CFO and, and she loves what she's doing. Sarah is the best customer service person I've ever met. You know, she's crying if an order doesn't get fulfilled. Everyone just loves her. She's just, she's, you know, in the perfect role for her. Yes. Rich has he's tactical he's got the the headphones on he's got the gear he's he, he's you know, he's doing all this military stuff like he's he's crushing it and i think because that's he's he's in the perfect role for himself and right. that's why he's done these amazing things aaron is documenting this journey and these videos i mean he's he said his dream is always to be a documentarian i mean he's mm. documenting the whole journey yeah um so that's how i try to try to fit people into these roles you know i want the best salesperson in the world that just believes in the product that loves to sell. So I think we're getting, you know, we got a couple slots to fill, but um, as, as long as people are in the role that they love, then I think we're doing things right. Fabulous. Um, anything in the product pipeline you want to share with us? 
Totally. We're, we're working on a few things. We have a new mask coming called the Tactical Respirator, which uh, I'm not sure if I could swear on this program, Alan, but I'll, I'll call the, the most badass mask you've ever seen. It's, Absolutely. It's cooler than uh, Tom Hardy in Batman. It's, yeah. it's that cool. Like it's beyond that. Um, so that's coming out. Uh, we're building it now. We've, we've got pre-sales. Uh, you're going to see that in a couple months. And it's, it's more for like law enforcement, military type applications. Mm-hmm. You know, these men and women are blowing up walls. They're, yep. they're breathing in fentanyl and bad things. So it's, it's more than that. So it's very right. cool. Yep. Um, we also have a medical mask that's coming out. Mm-hmm. We call the right. Connect. Uh, it hooks into medical grade oxygen. And uh, we've got a, a fourth one that's, we're, it's, that's just kicking off. And we'll, we'll share that <laughs> a little later on. Okay. But yeah, well, Peter, congratulations! You guys have worked so hard, and and you you've earned uh, the success that you have right now. So uh, don't let that stop you. But it is it's great to see uh, an organization of of people that want to do good, and by doing good, you're going to do well. And, and I want to congratulate. To you uh, and Rich and the rest of the team for that. And thanks very much for joining us on uh, AQ's Blog and Grill today. Alan, thank you so much. You've been a big supporter from day one, and uh, we're very grateful. So um, it's a pleasure speaking with you today. Yeah, and now get back to work. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you, sir. We will see you soon. Bye, guys. Thank you very much. Hughes Blog and Grill.